Okay, that was pretty dramatic, huh? Here we got the timeline. 12 years ending in 280 AD, marked with Agartesitai in Matthew 24 7. And here we got the same word in Mark 13, tagging Matthew 24 7. In Mark 13, 8. At the same period as it ends, 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 at 280. This is syllable 280, when you add the 30, okay. In, in, syllable meaning AD year, okay. See, this is syllable 250, and this is syllable 246, and we go 47, 48, 49, all oh, 50, well, okay, 47, 48, 49, 50, okay, what's well, in the middle of, ha ha, middle, because the end is in the middle here, you get that play? He wants to make absolutely sure you know it's not the end by moving the text moving the text to exactly be within 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 the Matthew passage that says the nation will rise against nation it's not the end honey it's not the end see it's so much not the end that I'm gonna put this text that Christ had already said uh, before before See, because that's 268 A.D. And, 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 and I'm, I'm going to take that text. I'm going to move it down in my repeat of the text to here. So that when you do your tic-tac-toe and you're looking at Matthew and counting your syllables, it's like nation rise against nation. Oh, but not the end, not the end, not the end, not the end. And then I'm going to benchmark it with the word that begins. It's not the end of the rising. And I'm just going to cut off that last syllable. To stress the fact it's not over yet. Don't be expecting Christ to return then. Because it's not the end. But see. Because people rejected the Bible. They rejected learning the meter. And they didn't pass it on to their kids. But obviously the meter can be reconstructed. Because that's what we're doing here. And we see that. Oh we have the same original words that the writers wrote. Because they're playing on each other's syllable count. And so all those people at that time, who had by then were still learning Greek and still spoke Greek, but they didn't read their Bibles. They were all busy saying, oh, it's the end because Rome is a thousand years old. See, she was born in 753 B.C. So in 247... A.D. That's a thousand years. <gasps> so we're in the end times, brother. No. No. Alupo totelos. Not the end. See? Christ said it up here with the verb. Estin. But, not yet, is the end. In order to make his meter fit, Mark leaves out the word estin. Alupo totelos. Instead of alupo estin totelos. See, this is alupo, alupo estin totelos. He just says alupo totelos. It's not the end. Not the end. In the middle. In the middle. Before the end of the 250. And then he makes the verb that began. Eger desitai. He stops that. That's 280 right here. Is 2. 80 aka 250 in the syllable counts. So when you got here in Matthew, your equivalent, your exact equivalent in Mark is in the middle of the verb rising. In other words, <coughs> they will still be rising. It's not over. The fat lady hasn't sung yet. It's not the end. Egerteset. Instead of Egertesetai, it's Egerteset. Not over. See? Isn't that cute? 
Now, he's at that point, he's in the middle, in the middle of the verb. And the verb says, Tai God Ethnos Epi Ethnos. But he wants his syllable counts to go to the end of what it took our boy uh, Diocletian. Because he had to do a lot of fighting afterwards, starting in 283. So now we're at we're at 280 AD and this is 281 AD, 82 AD, 83 AD, which is where Luke see Luke 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 ends and Ephesians one the end of Ephesians 110 ends. And he wants to make sure he tags Luke too. So he's going, okay, well let's see, and I get this hey, that's two fifty to match Matthew and stress the fact that it's not the end because I'm not even going to the end of the verb that begins that clause. Okay, so now we got 281, 282, 283, which is where Diocletian kills the bar so that he can fulfill the prophecy and he ends up becoming emperor as a result that year. Well, he has to fight for a couple more years, so that's why it's only at the beginning of it. Because now he has to fight at the other nos, the other nations. So that's what he does. Is he he's, he's, he he kills a boar there, and now he's fighting at the ethnos, the other the other the other pretenders to the throne. He's got to fight all of them. He has to fight them all, and there are a bunch of them. Okay, there are a bunch of them. And now he adds more text. Mark is adding that so that he can play to Luke. Kai Basilea and Kingdom. Epi means upon, but here it's against. Basilea and Kingdom against Kingdom. In other words, the difference between an ethnos and Bible, in Bible terms. Okay. Ethnos is a bunch of people who become, as it were, a tribal nation. They're all related to each other, bloodwise, in some way. Okay, but Kingdom that's that's a political entity all right so he's saying and nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom yeah because Rome prided itself on sitting on many nations sitting on many peoples as a kingdom and that's what they were fighting over was who was gonna be that king of Rome oh, they didn't use the word king because that made him feel like it wasn't really a kingdom and they didn't really have a king. They had a first citizen, so they called him Caesar. Okay? Kaiser in Greek. And that's real important because they're going to make fun of the Kaiser name. And um, Actually, Mark does it. Mark makes fun of the Kaiser name. He truncates it to mere Kai. So does Revelation. I haven't noticed if that wordplay is in Matthew and Luke yet. Okay, so see, so see, he's taking it now all the way to the end, and this is 298, so he has bracketed the 12-year period ending in 250, which is 280 AD, and he has bracketed the period that ends in 283 AD, so he has included by reference through this bracketing, covering the same historical period, He's included Ephesians, Luke, and Matthew. See how clever that is? All right. Now, Luke had done his ethnos epi ethnos kai basileia kai basileion epi basileion up here. So you'll notice that he's taking. See, Luke repeats the same word, quoting Matthew here. Okay, so here's the original Matthew. Here it is repeated in Luke so that you know to look at Matthew. That's why they do this. It's a form of quotation. Okay, and here's the same word again. That's Matthew, now quoting Matthew and Luke. And then he takes the phrase, the phrase that Luke used. Luke didn't use gar. Okay. 
Luke didn't use gar, but Matthew did. Okay? Mark, therefore, uses gar. In other words, the, the point you should be getting from this from a textual standpoint is, oh, Mark is literally tagging the text in both Luke and Matthew. Yeah. And why is that important? Because there are a bunch of dipshits. I'm sorry, there's no nice name for them. Who are trying to claim that Mark's is really the first gospel. And that we should somehow rip up the four gospels we have and cut and paste them and make what they consider to be the Kel, which is a German word for source. It's ridiculous. And there's some really big name scholars involved in this. And those people should just be hung up. They should be hung out to dry. But, you know, that what good is that going to do God? So just ignore them. Because here's your proof in front of your face. Mark is quoting both. Matthew, which doesn't use Basileia. And Luke, which does. And Luke is quoting Ephesians. He's tagging Ephesians with what he says. Alright? So, hello. This is Mark reminding the reader, go look at the same portion of Matthew. Go look at the same portion of Luke. And now look at the difference in the syllable counts because, honey, it's going to keep on going. So he's bracketing the 298, and that's true in history. Okay? They had to keep fighting even after 283 when Diocletian first, you know, dons his own purple. I forget where he was. I want to say that he was... Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the location right, but I want to say he was in Germany when he killed the guy named Affer, which is, the English translation for that is Boar, B-O-A-R. I think he was in, he was somewhere in Germany, I don't know if it was Pannonia or something like that. Um, and he had a bunch of rivals, like, I don't know, five, six rivals in other parts of what was considered the Roman world at that time. And he had to go fight each one of them. So it took time. So when you still see ethnos epi ethnos kai basilea epi basilea, that's what it's saying. He had to keep fighting. And that takes you to 298. All right? But he dated his own rule from 283, and the Senate recognized him in 285. That's real important, because this is the one guy, the only emperor in history, who retires. But it takes him that long to fight against. And in order to do that fighting against, he appoints another guy, Maximinian, okay? And, and Maximinian is supposed to take control of the West. Diocletian retires almost immediately, not retires, but goes almost immediately to what we call Croatia starts to, you know, create a palace there and all this kind of stuff to, you know, form up a ro sort of Roman religion. And then he has Maximinian be his, like, co-ruler. It really wasn't a co-ruler, but it was sort of pitched that way. And then there were two other guys that were also pitched. One of them was a fellow named Constantine Chlorus, who was in Britain and Gaul. Chlorus was the father of what we call Constantine, the famous Constantine, okay? And then there was a fourth guy that he wanted to, you know, sort of apprentice, um, and that was a guy named Galerius, all right? And these guys were really famous in history. Maximinian had a son whose name, whose name was Maxenius. Maxenius was actually in Rome. And Maximinian wanted to help Maxenius, you know, gain a, gain power in Rome. This was they called the historians call this the Tetrarchy. You can search on that. T E T R A R C H Y. And read up on it. It's real important because basically this is wordplay on the Tetrarchy. Because what they were trying to do is in order to stop the, all the civil warring in the crisis of the third century, he created this sort of like four spheres of influence, each Caesar would have a group, you know, a sort of geographical area he controlled, and it was really Diocletian over all of them, 
but they, they pitched it off as if they were four equal rulers. And the idea was to buy them off and to get everybody to say, okay, we want to be under these four because it's a unity. Okay? That was the whole idea. So you'll notice that there's a sort of play there because you got one, two, three, and four. Cute, huh? And of course that same play that is not during Diocletian's time, all right, is up here in Luke prior. Because that was that there there were at least four sections that were being disputed over that time too. And then of course here, okay, and then you have Chi Basilea Abbey Basilea occurring during the same time as Mark lists it. See how clever this is? See how he's wrapping to the text and the meter, but it's slightly bracketed inside or outside, before and after the text in Matthew and the text in Luke. This is a frequent thing. Now what you're doing with this text then is you're reading the history, which I'm telling you while I'm reading it, you're reading the history, or at, in case it hadn't happened to you yet, the prophecy for your time in these brackets, okay? And you're noticing, oh, wait a minute, it's down here in Matthew, but it's up here in Luke, which tells you that the trend has a wider stretch, because Luke is focusing on the west. Matt, Mark is focusing on the east. So he stretches it down farther because the problem in the East continued longer. See how precise this is about history. I know that what I'm telling you is true because I got the history. It continued longer in the East. So he didn't stop at 261. Okay? But Luke is focusing on the West, and it started earlier in the West with Gaul and Britain and... and um, Spain. Okay? So now you've got a more good, you know, a better fix on what this crisis of the third century was. And this ends up meaning 247 AD. This ends up meaning 268 AD. Okay? A lot of, a lot of your scholars will say that the crisis of the third century began well, actually, most of them will start to say somewhere between 231 and 248. Okay, 235 was when uh, Severus Alexander was killed. And that was, that, that you could all argue was the official beginning, because that's when everybody started playing musical chairs. But some would say, well, it was during the last four years, because that's when the Senate got sick of the Severan mothers. Okay, so that would be 231. And that was when there was mass riot in Rome and everybody thinking that it was the end of the world because they were coming up on the thousandth anniversary of Rome. Okay? So you see, you're getting a spread of time here that you can check with real history. And each guy is taking his own particular um, geographical area of specialty because Marx is in the East. And it took a long time to finish it in the East. Okay, before, before our boy... Um, Diocletian had really sufficient control. Okay? Now, I haven't covered. What does, what does Revelation say about this same time period? Because that would be, that would be, that would be if we go to 280. Okay. Minus, oops, I did plus. What's going on? Minus 88. Okay, then, what, whoops. 280 minus 88 when he writes is 192 in the meter. Okay, well that's between here and here. And that's what we'll pick up in the next increment to see what Revelation has to add to this story that we can confirm now in history.